Well, since my first video on the ICO 221 vacuum tube voltmeter, uh, this followed me home, and uh, I let it in the house, figuring that it might yield additional parts uh, that may or may not be present in this. But more importantly, this one was claimed to be more or less original in terms of the wiring. There weren't advertised improvements or uh, claimed repairs. And so what I'm hoping to do is open this up and see what the missing values of some of the capacitors were in this older one, uh, or I should say the, the first one that I got. Uh, you'll remember in particular there was a 4.7 microfarad capacitor, a modern one, in the place where the filter capacitor should have been, and that's you know like an order of magnitude too low compared to what you usually think of for filter capacitor. So with that in mind, let's uh, just kind of look at a few things here, a few differences. This is serial number 37772, and this is serial number 44263. So presumably this is a slightly more recent version of this. And you can see there are a few differences. The, the uh, chicken head switches here are the same. The, the switches are all, you know, the pilot light, all, all those are the same. Uh, but you see on this one here, these potentiometers have a slightly, you know, they have a pointed knob on them. Uh, and the potentiometers on this one are completely round and smooth. Other than that, uh, these two units look identical. There are slightly different plugs. So this is the one for the one on the right, and this is the one for the one on the left. But the cords themselves look like they're the same. Uh, I suspect that this is something that someone has attached later on. All right, so without further ado, just I want to make this a, a very quick video. Let's open this up and uh, look inside and compare it to what we had in the first VTVM. Oh, and one more thing before we do that. Um, this one, in addition to uh, allegedly being unrepaired or unupdated, also came with the original probes. And uh, they're actually in very good shape. Uh, you know, all the, all the threads still work, uh, and you can, can take this out and see the resistor that's inside, and so we'll check that out uh, very shortly. But, uh, you know, bonus that we got the probes. All right, here we are now with uh, both units out of the respective chassis. There was only one other completely trivial difference, which was the unit on the right had slotted screws to a uh, unbutton the chassis and uh, the case, and this one had Phillips head screws. Uh, so the, again, this is the, the newly acquired one, but the one with the later serial number. And the first thing that's just really hard to miss right off the bat is this huge electrolytic capacitor. And that is in the same spot as this orange, uh, more modern capacitor in the previous unit. This is 4.7 microfarads, but this, turn this around a little bit, this is one of the, the famous Sprague Adams capacitors, and it's 40 microfarad. So that's clearly more in line with what I would expect. The other thing that you notice is, uh, you know, here's a wax paper capacitor, here's a waxy, here's a waxy, here's a waxy. So this thing really does look like it has not been updated or changed at all, with the sole exception of someone having soldered on an Energizer 1.5 volt battery, a D-cell. So the only capacitor in this that isn't a uh, paper wax capacitor that I see is this large electrolytic, as I said. And these are kind of interesting. These are the famous Sprague Atom series of capacitors. And at first you might say, well, you know, is that really a period uh, capacitor? Where has this been inserted since? And uh, I don't know what the answer to that is for certain, but what I 
do know is that the more modern Spregs say atom singular on here. Uh, but this is a plural. This is atoms. And I remember a thread from the Antique Radio Forum, which I will link in below if I can find it, that ask the question about the age of capacitors like this. And there was a lot of confusion, but someone you know, made the point and, and based the point on advertisements from trade publications that the plural atoms was used in the late 40s and early 1950s. And then for some reason, uh, which is unknown, Sprague changed to the singular atom. So this is likely an, an original capacitor. Uh, just a couple of other issues here before we turn this over. You can see the power line is in horrible shape. Um, let's just turn this over a bit and reorient it and do the same with the original. So the first thing to notice uh, with respect here, let me change this so that it's exactly alike. The, 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 totally the same orientation. There we go. So the first thing to notice here is that uh, magic smoke came out of that resistor. You can see, try to make it a little bit clearer. You can see here where that's charred. In fact, that resistor got so hot that it charred the insulation on this resistor. So that's the first thing to notice. And this was from the ohms gang on this rotary switch here. So this has never happened to me, but it is a common thing to happen where you forget that your meter is on the ohm setting and then you try to measure uh, some high voltage. And what happens is you very quickly have in rush of high uh, current and you toast the resistor and you'll let the magic smoke out. These look to be otherwise uh, precision wire wound resistors. So this must have been a real show when it happened. Uh, another thing to notice is on the previous unit, all these carbon composition resistors, not the wire wound resistors. And moreover, there's this, um, I don't know if you can see it under here, but there's a, an added terminal strip. So I'd bet that someone, uh, that these original resistors met with a similar fate and that they were replaced with carbon composition resistors that, uh, that the person had on hand and they added this uh, terminal strip just to uh, make it easier uh, because they had to uh, gang some uh, resistors together in series to get the uh, precision resistance. So it's always interesting looking into these uh, old pieces of equipment to see what tragedies have transpired and if they've been addressed, how they've been addressed. All right, uh, let's just look at the tubes up here. So this tube is actually branded ICO, uh, unlike in the original, uh, in the previous meter. But uh, the other two were, so this was branded um, RCA and that was branded RCA. And uh, this one, which I don't remember what it was branded, was uh, branded GE. So let's see what those tubes are in this one. So this was uh, an ICO branded tube. So that's almost certainly original. This was an RCA. This is an RCA here. And this is actually a Sylvania tube. Uh, so that's also interesting. Um, on the top here, you remember, I was just absolutely appalled that someone had dumped some sort of a, a green substance down on these adjustment pots. There looks like there's some sort of thing, uh, some sort of substance that's been here, but it's not nearly as bad. It's not nearly as caked on as it was in, in the original meter. So that's, um, 
I'm pretty happy with that. And what else here uh, to look at? Yeah, that's that's just really charred. That's very impressive. Must have made quite a sound. Uh, so we can change these uh, wax capacitors and the uh, big Sprague Atom. I'm very curious to get the Sprague electrolytic on the capacitor tester and see what kind of a state it was in. I, I'm going to replace it. There's absolutely no question about that. But these were supposed to be very, very good capacitors, and I'm just wondering how they aged. Uh, so on the front here, uh, this pot is uh, very smooth. The switch seems very crisp. Same with that. And, uh, whoa, this... This pot is very difficult to adjust, so that will at least have to be cleaned with a cleaner, uh, or it might actually have to be replaced. So I don't know if I'm going to come out of this exercise with two ICO 221 vacuum tube voltmeters, or one based on what I have to cannibalize from the one that's in, uh, in worse shape. But hopefully I can come up with at least one functional meter, uh, just again, because they're neat and I have to feed this VTVM addiction. Uh, and also because this has a 15 mega ohm input impedance. Is that right? 15? It doesn't sound right. Hold on. Yes, I was, I was wrong about that. Uh, so going back to the schematic here, we have five, nine and a half, and then another half. So this is 10 uh, uh, mega ohms. Uh, but then down here, there's a 15 mega ohm um, resistor in the lead so that would add up to 25. So this is a 25 mega ohm input uh, impedance instrument. All right and the last thing that I want to do here is just uh, look at the probe uh, which again is in is in very good shape. The, uh, the cord is actually reasonably supple and uh, let's take the unscrew the plug here and you see that uh, this is a very nicely shielded cable. Uh, it's all hooked up correctly. I uh, may or may not change the cable. It's in very good shape. The uh, the coax. But uh, that's that. The head of the uh, probe again is in good shape. That that comes off there. You can probably see this wire wrapped around there. That is the uh, one end of the 15 mega ohm resistor, which I'm not going to pry out right now. But what I am going to do is uh, set my bench meter here to ohms, and you can't see it in this shot. It's off to the side. But I'm going to test the resistance, and I get 13.9 mega ohms. So that resistor has degraded a bit. It's drifted. Usually they drift higher. This one is drifted lower, which makes me wonder if it's a drift or if it got toasted. Either way, I have a brand new 15 mega ohm resistor that is just itching to be installed in that probe. So we'll do that and we'll get that up to speed as well. All right, so the darndest things follow you home sometimes, and uh, I'm pretty sure that between two non-functional ICO VTVMs, I can make one functional VTVM. All right, that's enough for this short video. Uh, if you like this, please give it a big thumbs up below and uh, we'll return to you know the continuing saga of the ICO vacuum tube voltmeter. Thanks a lot for watching.